I'd been hearing about quantum computers for years, uh, but people talked about them like they were science fiction. And then uh, one company said, no, they're not science fiction. We're not only making them, we're selling them. You can buy one. All right, these things cost $10 million. Obviously, there's a lot of competition. Was it hard to get in the door to get cooperation to learn how these work and how the company that's making them now is uh, positioning itself? The hard part really was, uh, it wasn't getting in the door, it was understanding what people were saying. Everybody who works at D-Wave uh, has a PhD in physics, so a lot of it has to be um, rephrased for the uh, purposes of the layman. The receptionists have PhDs? I, probably she does, I wouldn't be surprised at all. Right. So this is something that's big and exciting for people who are interested in computer science. Is this something that if our re when our readers look, take a look at this piece, are people gonna be excited about the future or scared by the future? I think that they're going to be uh, excited. This is the kind of computer that can solve problems uh, that we used to think were uncrackable. And these are problems not just in computing, uh, but in medicine. Uh, you can imagine designing new drugs with this thing that would cure things uh, that we never thought uh, we could get at before. Now you're a smart guy and you wrote the piece uh, trying to get your arms around it. Do you have your head and arms fully around this thing or is it still a little bit murky? Uh, you know, uh, Richard Feynman said, if you think you understand quantum mechanics, you don't understand quantum mechanics. So I think I'm confident enough to say that I don't understand quantum mechanics. How can it be, your article explains that while some people are excited, as you said, government and some of the leading uh, names in business want one of these things, they're confident, or at least believe, that they're going to change the world and, and have huge applications. How could it be that other scientists, other computer experts are skeptical? Well, uh, everything to do with quantum computers is complicated. Uh, people argue about whether they're actually achieving the kinds of quantum effects uh, you'd need to do this kind of computing, whether they're asking the computers the right questions, uh, because in some, it only, it'll only answer certain kinds of problems, other kinds of problems uh, it leaves alone. Everything having to do with quantum mechanics is weird uh, and crazy and uh, uh, subject to many interpretations. Uh, and uh, that's why it's kind of hard to pin down. Why does Jeff Bezos believe in this? Well, Jeff Bezos is a smart guy, and a lot of smart people believe that D-Wave is going to be everywhere in 10 years, uh, and this kind of computing will be, everybody's going to need it, and only one company can do it. Uh, and if they're right, if they really are onto something, they're going to make billions. Obviously, this can have a huge impact on the economy. In terms of national security, if the U.S. government has these, do we get an advantage in terms of national security or espionage or uh, uh, competing with other countries on the economy? We would be able to crack codes that are considered right now uncrackable, and that would certainly give us an advantage, yeah. So everything the Chinese and the Russians are doing, we'd know if we could get this thing up and running? Not everything, but a lot more. Are they selling mostly in the United States? Has anyone else bought them anywhere else in the world, or just American companies and government? They have a few private customers uh, that they haven't announced. Um, I don't think they're overseas. Um, but like Lex Luthor, some, 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 will they sell them to someone who use, plans to use them for evil and not good? That is a good question yeah. that they'll have to decide for themselves. But there's some secret people who bought these that we don't know about. Yeah. yeah. You've not purchased one. Did you get a loaner for the story? <laughs> no, not even that. Have you seen it? Oh yeah, I've seen it. What does it. it look like? It looks like a giant black box. It's like how giant? Bigger than, I'd say, a bread box? It is 10 feet tall. 10 feet tall. Uh, and 10 feet square. So basically. like the computers of, of like the 1950s. That's right. It, it looks like ENIAC. Uh, we're back to the days of, um, you know, the thing that fills a room. In the end, if this thing uh, succeeds, it's going to be as revolutionary as what? It's going to be as revolutionary as the microprocessor. You have to imagine the whole field of computing starting over uh, and uh, we're just building a whole new story. And is this technology just for so-called supercomputers, very large, purchased only by major corporations and government, or is this technology potentially applicable for smaller computers and use in everyday life? Well, right now, it's a supercomputing thing. All computers used to be mainframes, supercomputers. A um, couple decades from now, I would not be surprised to see this on a desktop, uh, but that's going to take some time. So I want an Infinity Machine iPhone. Possible? It will cost you just $10 million. It's a good deal. Mm -hmm.